What is going on, Patriot Gardeners? It's your buddy Murdoch. And tonight, I'm back with a Wild Wild America version of the gardening channel. And uh, I got something really special for you guys I think you're going to enjoy. And it also uh, comes to mind that I've never actually shown you guys the garden that I've got going outside. So I'm actually going to do a uh, walk and show on that but for tonight's video I'll go ahead and show you a little peek see at the area we're gonna be looking at got this little pepper here you know he's checking out this area and see if he likes it looks like he likes it some of our strawberries at, that we did in our video together and uh, check it out we've got runners off of these berry plants that we planted so everything seems to be going really well here are the cucumbers that we did on video and my 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 look at these guys go uh they've been out here i think now about three weeks and uh they're already just about out of control i've got the trellis all the way up so uh they've got about five and a half six foot to go we'll see how they do and then we've got a bunch of tomato plants a multitude of variety that i planted here in the front of the bed to see how they do but tonight in our video and you're going to have to excuse the wind you're going to here and probably see in the video um, we're in a uh, red flag warning tonight for 30 and 40 mile an hour wind gust but the video just can't wait so here we've got a kale plant and um, somewhere in here is a, another pepper plant and it is dwarfed by this cherry tomato plant that is growing down in here and that's actually going to be one of the focus points in tonight's video. And you can see this thing is just, it's got so many tomatoes, it's actually laying them on the ground. There are hundreds upon hundreds of hundreds of tomatoes in this. So for anybody who has questions on uh, whether or not the uh, tomato planting method works, putting the uh, nutrients into the ground, the bone meal, the blood meal, the uh, slow release organic fertilizer, and whatnot uh well there's your proof this plants it's already doubled over on itself i think twice now so it would already be all the way up to the roof line if it were tied up properly but i just kind of let it go and then we come over here and well we've got even more tomatoes this is kind of a surprise garden area i threw some uh, seeds out with some bell pepper plants and you can see a few peppers that are back there hiding and uh, everything kind of just went nuts in this area so we're just going to kind of let it go and this is what we're going to call where the wild things are so for tonight's video like i said i've got something really special and believe it or not it involves these guys right here see that fly mm-hmm in just a minute you're not going to hopefully I'll be able to get this on film and you'll have to excuse also the neighbors have decided to uh, <laughs> water their barrels or something at the exact same time I uh, decided to come out here and videotape so tonight for your enjoyment ladies and gentlemen I have this right here and if you can see inside there my little babies have hatched and uh well we're gonna go ahead and turn them loose now when you do this these guys are gonna go kind of nuts so i'm just gonna kind of chuck them in there like that and then we'll pick up these guys that are right here because there's always going to be some stragglers that are still left in the bottom of this and that little fly that was right there let's see if we can get something National Geographic kind of going on here. I'll pour some of these guys out. Maybe we can get one on the same leaf. Oh, there we go. Let's see what happens here. Let me see if I can zoom in. Oh, he already took off. But these little guys. <laughs> they're going to be all over the place. And these are probably some of your best little garden warriors ever. Let me see if I can 
get the camera to zoom in on one of them. <laughs> there we go. Hey, little girl. Oh, you gonna wave at everybody? Say hi, Patriot Gardeners. Oh, it's not focusing in real well. There we go. Say, I am about two hours old. Now, getting these guys and letting them go in your garden is probably one of the coolest little things that you can do. I mean, what is better than this? And now these little guys, as they run around the garden, anything that they come into contact with that's smaller than them, aphids, white flies, uh, anything, thrips, uh, any of those little hoverflies that come down and lay the eggs on your uh, plants that turn into the leaf borers, yeah, they'll go after those too. And if you're really good to them, and you don't use a bunch of pesticide in your garden, or chemical fertilizers, which I'll get to in just a moment, these little guys will thrive, and you will see them throughout the year as the garden grows, and you grow and they grow together. It's actually a neat little process. And let me tell you something else, Patriots. If you do a really good job with these little guys here, about September or October, You'll be out in your garden, and you're going to see one of these guys, only it's going to be about three inches long. And it's going to come walking up to you, like literally walk up to you, and it's going to put its little arms up in the air. And it's going to ask you for some help, because at that point, she's reached the end of her life. And she has a very special gift for all of your kindness that she would like to leave with you. And if you put her in a very nice special place and take good care of her in the last few hours she has, she'll leave you with something that looks just like this. And you can take it and put it in a nice dry place. Hi, little baby. Oh, jump. And um, next spring you will get a whole bunch of little babies out of it and the cycle will begin over and over and over and the more organic you are in your garden and the stuff that you're using the better off you're going to be and the better off everything in your garden is going to be which brings me to the last point of my evening i've seen a few videos online in which folks have been uh, boasting that there is no difference between chemical fertilizers and organic-based fertilizers. And um, that's just absolute ignorance and not the truth. If that were the case, we wouldn't have 1,000 square kilometer dead zones in the oceans from runoff from chemical uh, agriculture uh, fertilizer use. And we wouldn't have pretty much 95, I think it's 95 or 96 percent of the topsoil in the United States dead and completely devoid of microbe life from the use of chemical fertilizers, if that were the case. And I'm going to make this point and drive it home. One simple statement made. And if you want to argue with it, then, well, that's on you. If I were to give you the opportunity to go to a grocery store and buy big ag, chemical-based fed produce, or I sent you to a local organic farmer's market where they prided themselves in only 100% organic farming and picking tomatoes when they're ripe on the vine, which produce would have the higher nutrient content the higher taste, the better overall nutritional value, and be devoid of all of those horrible chemicals. That's right, it would be the organic one. So making statements that there is no difference in using it in your garden 
is completely ridiculous and like I said absolutely ignorant people should know better than that when you use the miracle blue as we'll call it in your soil what happens is it goes down into this dirt and it kills all of those little microbes and if it gets on these guys it'll kill them too and all of the other little beneficial insects and instead of your plants making a symbiotic relationship with all the little mycorrhiza and all the little microbes and little nematodes and little good guys and bad guys that live in the dirt, your plants then become dependent on you and chemicals. It's like giving you an IV and giving you your nutrients through the arm or vein. Yeah, it'll feed you for a little bit and it's like a shock to the plant, but after just a little bit, you're not going to be doing real well. That's why chemically based farming never ever is sustainable. It always uses about 10 times the amount of carbon to produce those chemicals as a natural form of the same nutrient for your plant. Let that sink in 10 times the amount of byproduct. So pretty much what that means is you have these beautiful plants in your garden, a nice beautiful kale plant, and you use a bunch of mir miracle blue on it. Well, guess what happens? You basically just put enough pollutant into the air, into the environment, whether it's in the manufacturing process or in your soil right there, to alleviate any of the positives that your plant could put out. So for those gardeners out there on YouTube, telling folks that there is no difference between using a 100% organic gardening base and not, <laughs> you obviously have never tasted an organic tomato and you obviously don't care about the chemical runoff in your own gardens. You obviously don't care about all of the other lives that matter, that depend on you to be a good steward in your garden. I always look back to the original gardener and father started in a garden for a reason. It's not a metaphor, it's a statement for life. It's because it was the best place for his children to grow. And I really don't think at any point in time, if you were to ask the best gardener that ever existed, well, should we use petroleum-based man-made chemicals that kill the environment, the water, and the runoff, and the sea, and light, and create dead zones? Or should we use what we, you gave us, Father, and recycle and be good stewards instead of trying to cheat our way out of it? I leave that answer up to you. I love you all. Thank you for coming along on this little garden adventure. God bless. Murdoch out.